I just noticed a really bigger miracle than what I had thought. There was this guy. I mean, he was just being a jerk. That's all. I mean, nothing more. Just being a jerk. He came up and because I said that about the electricity. And here's something that he did say that I got out of this. It says, um, I did find your test. This is one thing he did say. It was, it was at least nice. I did find your testimony encouraging concerning the hydro going off all around you but not in your home. That was a miracle for sure, considering the electrical grid in your neighborhood is all interconnected and comes from a single source. He's right. It doesn't make sense how that electricity stays on like it did. I mean, I can't make sense of it. I mean, maybe somebody else, you know, who knows electricity could make sense of that. But I know that God had taken care of me. And here's what I said back. The miracle about the electric you said is true. It makes no sense. He tried to say that I wasn't feeding my cats or that I was hoarding cats. And that's why I put up the cat video that said I got two cats. Um, both of them are 10 years old or older. Charlie's older than 10. And um, so I've had them a long time and I've been the only one who take care to take care of them. And God takes care of us. And I'll explain that. Now, this miracle of the electricity, I've told everybody. A hit was taken out of my life by a drug dealer woman that my husband were separated, took up with, and her cousin next door. I guess they were the ones who took, who who, who were the ones who uh, orchestrated it. I mean, they even run a, an orange yellow, an orange electrical cord right over to my house during this time. And I asked my ex, "What is going on?" And you know what he told me. We're regrounding the house, is what he said. And I got a message that said, in all capital letters, capital U, capital R, D-E-A-D, -E you are dead. And then I got in the mail a insurance policy that uh, was for $10,000 that I didn't sign, but my name was on it. And uh, got it in the mail just days before I got electrocuted. And I tried to call the police. Nobody would help me. Because everybody knew who this was, they they nobody's gonna, I, nobody's gonna help anybody in that situation. They wanted to stay out of it. Nobody wants this stuff coming on their house. I mean, and, and when you get in a situation like that, man, everybody clams up. Nobody's gonna say nothing because they don't want nothing like that coming on their family. So that was the electricity miracle then. Currents of electricity ran through my body, and I had a near death experience. Jesus decided to spare my life. And even though they couldn't kill me, they still have slandered me all over to where nobody will talk to me. Nobody wants to be my friend. If they do try to come up to be anything, it's to be a jerk. And so he said, well, I'm happy that you have a loving husband that brings you some food after I said, no, it's him. But it never was, John. You have to understand that. In the same way that God saved me from freezing to death the other night by, by somehow miraculously keeping this electricity on here. I don't know how it happened. I just know that it did. And, and saving me from when they run that electricity under the house through a red wire and stuck it up into my shower and electric currents running through me. Two times with electricity. It's been the miracle. So my loving husband, as he's so... so so amazingly puts it, he's done nothing. He only had to obey what God said. It was what God said. All of this was orchestrated by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's almost as if I, I was told specifically when I first got saved that I was to completely trust God. He wouldn't have done anything for me. As a matter of fact, he did everything he could to not help me. I've had... I've had um, I don't know what they're called on the on, on my vehicles cut. Things that should have killed me. Mysterious things like that. I've smelt gasoline all around my house. And somehow all these things God has protected me. That's that's my loving husband with his friends. And and I'll tell you it's the Freemasons who help run these friends who sell the drugs. Everybody knows it. I'm not saying anything nobody doesn't already know. And if they want to kill me, I'm ready to die. I don't care. You know, 
It's God's decision. And that's what he told me that day that I was being electrocuted. He said that I was not my own. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ told me as electric currents were running through my body. He told me this. You are not your own. He told me that I couldn't kill myself. And he said that they couldn't kill me. That's what he told me. And he also told me that there were people in this group. This is, this is a highly satanic occult. That's all I know how to say it. These people are involved with some, well, just darkness. Some really deep, ugly stuff, man. And I first came into it when I worked at the police department around 2000. When I seen some believable stuff. I don't want to go into that there. But that's when all this stuff started opening up to me about how deep Satanism goes in this place, in this little Peyton place, this little town. And they work together as a group. And when you come against a group like that, if they want to slander you, I mean, these are people who, they can ruin you. And, and they do. I, I just give my reputation and everything. Anything that I have left, I just give it to God. There's nothing I could do against that. I mean, they, they could say anything they want and do what they want. But I'm hanging on to the Lord. I'm hanging on to what he says to do. And if I die tonight or if I die, whenever he decides or however he decides, I'm going to trust the Lord. And that's, a, that's just the way it is. But the reason why my cats get fed, the reason why any of this has happened is because the Lord Jesus Christ decided he makes it just hard enough on me. He keeps the pressure on just right. He keeps me at a place to where I am so dependent upon him that it is unbelievable. So dependent that I have to stay on that narrow path. And if I start veering off to the right or to the left, he lets more attacks come in on wherever side that I need to be. You know, it's just like his rod and his staff. He, he comforts me. That's his rod and his staff right there. Keeping me right on that middle line because that's how he keeps me in his will. It's the most amazing thing, but I've watched Psalm 23 pl play out of my life in amazing ways. The whole psalm in amazing ways. That's how all this is God who orchestrated it. It's not some loving husband who just decided he would do it out of the good, good conscience of his heart. It was all the Lord Jesus Christ, and I know it. And there's nobody else that gets credit for it. There's no way he would have done anything to help me. He wanted me dead, not alive. But the Lord told me I was to trust him. So that's the second miracle with electricity. Somehow God orchestrated this, and I don't know how. Both times with electricity. And I was, he was supposed to bring heaters, but didn't. And um, it wouldn't have mattered anyway, because if the electric was out, what's, what's it going to do? And I just appreciate it if I like it. I honestly like it, my channel not getting traffic. He said he tried to, you know, insult me by saying nobody comes to your channel. I was just trying to encourage you. You come up and encourage somebody talking to him like that, tell him that they hoard cats or whatever. And I explained that in the cat video. It's in there. And I talked about that. I know how easily that can get out of hand. And I got and I'm, where I'm, I didn't have my health. And you let one litter come and that's it. Man, that's it. You, you got yourself a problem. But, the, you know, I took them to the pound. And for four years, I have two, my old boys, I've, I have two cats. I did get in a, in a problem there. And it's happened to other people. It's, it's horrible. But you can't believe how this stuff gets blown out of proportion. And nobody would help me, like my family, you know, nobody. But they would, but they use this as an opportunity to, to further ostracize me. And that was just, it, it really fell right into people who hate me. It fell right into their hands. And I fell for it. I fell right into that trap. I was like an idiot. It's like you get in that trap and you don't know how to get out. But thank God, I've only got two cats now. And that was the worst. It was so hard because I didn't have the strength to hardly take care of myself, let alone 
you know, litters of kittens from, yeah, anyway. So I know he's probably been fed some gossip from the gossip mill. You know what, people? When you see those videos coming up, I know who I'm doing them for. And that's why I'm contented with that. If no one else watches those videos that comes from that channel, I'm okay with that. It's peaceful. I like peaceful. And you know what else? I do it all for the Lord Jesus Christ as if he's the only one watching me. He's the only one I care about. It's only important to me that I do what he says to do, no matter if they've run everybody off and everybody hates me. Jesus loves me. And for a lot of you, you don't know how to deal with that because that's the last thing you want is for Jesus to love me. So please don't come and look at my, stay away. I don't need friends like that. I, I don't need friends at all. I have Jesus. I bless you. I care about you. I love you. But as you can see, Jesus takes care of me. I only ask for the real Christians out there, there's a few, that if, you, if the Holy Spirit moves you to pray for me, it, I like the way Sam Kennison put it. And it breaks my heart because I, the way he said it. He, I think, focused way too much on, I think in that meeting he said there was only four or five in that last meeting on that last sermon. Like he just felt like nobody even showed up. And people were dogging him. And he was crying and he said, if I ever come to your mind, if you're driving down the road or whatever, that he said, that's God. That's God reminding you to pray for me. And I say the same thing, but there's one thing different that I have that I don't think Sam Kinison have had, and that's that I do have this direct line of communication between me and the Lord Jesus Christ that wasn't ever severed. And I like peaceful. I don't need a crowd. And I found when you do have a crowd, even one person, you get one, even just one person can come up. And all you got is, is you get your everything turned upside down. You get it, you get tore up. You have to, it takes a lot of work. It's a lot of work to have a relationship with people. And it, and, I, and to be honest with you, uh, it doesn't sound good on my part. I'll just say it like this. I'm happy with peace. No matter how bad that makes me look or sound. And I'm very happy if only Jesus sees these videos go up. If only he sees it. That, that makes me happy. But please don't come up and troll me. Don't, don't come up on my channel and start, just start, you know, causing trouble. Be nice. I've had to learn to do it. <laughs> it's possible. If I could do it, and I mess up sometimes, and, and I know I do, but I'd really try hard to be nice where I wasn't so nice before. So I know it can be done because it, it's been done with me. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. Bless you in Jesus' name.